Once upon a time, in a village of old, a hero was born. A hero with remarkable skills never before seen. A hero who could giggle, fart, do a Cossack dance, tap dance, and belch. The world would never be the same. everyone, and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. My name is Jim Banks. I am joined by Matthew Van Zant, hey John Chicken Chaser Brandon, Chicken Chaser, oh god, <laughs> and Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. And this is a podcast where we play and talk about classic RPG games, one chunker at a time. Uh, this is the chunker where we start talking about Fable. Fable! What's that about? Um, I think it's like a Mother Goose adaptation. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. It's the thing with the wolves among us and all that. Yeah. It's a really good comic book, actually. In the 90s, I played a game called Fable that uh, starred a fox protagonist and his band of uh, animal friends going on an adventure, so I assume this is a remake of that? No, that was Robin Hood, the DreamWorks animated movie. That was Fable. No. Wait, did you just claim that Robin Hood's was a DreamWorks animated movie? Yeah, Robin Hood, Shrek, they're all buddies. That's crazy talk. Was Robin Hood Men in Tights a Disney film? Yeah. I don't He was a fox think man. So. It, it, it it wasn't. <clears throat> no. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those movies that maybe didn't age very well. Oh, probably not. <laughs> Most Mel Brooks Mel Brooks movies have not. I think stuff like The Producers is fine, and Blazing Saddles is fine. Dracula Dead and Loving It is also uh, a movie that I will defend until I'm dead. Really? Oh, no. Oh, it's mm. not that bad. Mm. Unless I'm misremembering it. Mm. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Fable 1996 <laughs> is a point-and-click adventure game developed by Symbiosis Interactive and, and was DreamWorks. the company's only release. About Robin Hood. Anyway. Yeah, we're talking about Fable, and in this episode, and like, not the Fable that Vanessa's talking about, the Fable that came out on the Xbox. But I I played the point-and-click adventure game. For this Was podcast, that one also did? directed by Peter Molyneux and totally uh, overblown in its hype? I'm looking at screenshots of it, and the protagonist does not appear to be a fox, so I don't know what I have mixed up in my head. <laughs> well, that's the Clearly worst something. version of Disney's Robin Hood via <laughs> DreamWorks, the game called Fable. He appears to be a little blonde boy, and he's talking to a woman in a bikini. What? Man, we should have played this game. This is amazing. <laughs> Can we talk a little bit about the background of Fable? Because Matthew brought up a very interesting point about its creator and how before this game came out, it was supposed to be the most revolutionary game to ever be produced and distributed for anything I ever. remember that. <laughs> I believe that Molyneux said that you would be able to plant a tree, a seed, and watch the tree grow. Yeah. You know, now that games are able to do this, it's not a big deal. I don't know why every, like, this game and uh, True Fantasy or whatever, the one that was supposed to come out on the Xbox as well, were like, we can harness the power of the Xbox so you can plant a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and they were obsessed. Like, every game wanted you to plant a tree, and that would eventually grow. Uh, like, I think Ultima 7 had stuff like that, too. And, and it was just this weird bullet point that sounds cool but actually isn't all that interesting they were so mm -hmm. obsessed with asking if they could they never stopped to ask if they should or more pertinently if anybody would ever give a shit they wouldn't because that's mm -hmm. boring tree growing the game oh that's basically stardew valley people like it yeah 
I, but I, I think what they're saying is like you could procedurally influence the world uh, in a yes. way that is. Yeah. Mm, well, I don't want to spoil things. It, Molyneux was lying. Yeah. That's it's every like, Molyneux game. It's like he drew up a, a uh, like an outline of what he wanted from the game and then didn't bother to check in on the development until it was done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every and, Molyneux game. Do you remember when the Kinect was coming out and he had this demo of like saying, if you have Kinect, you would have this virtual AI friend who could talk to you like seamlessly uh, named Milo, and you could like scan the skateboard you were holding in your hands, and he would take it and ride on it. It's yeah. like that was a Molyneux thing. That's fucking and stupid. It was a lie. Like there is, I I, mean, I knew it back in t- uh, 2009 or whatever that this there's no way this was possible. But why would you make this presentation that was a lie, like just straight up a lie? I don't think Molyneux is a liar intentionally. I think he just gets himself so hyped up with coming up with bullshit that he that these things could do he never actually stops to see if they can do them and then never really walks it back when he realizes that he can't do it but i think anyone who who knew anything about programming at the time knew you could not make a virtual ai character that you could talk to (laughs) maybe maybe he was just really lonely (laughs) <laughs> maybe that was him dropping hints to microsoft like come on guys can you come make on. me a nobody friend? likes me make me a friend <laughs> nobody likes me anymore there's a fable of black and white what was molyneux's first game wasn't it like um it populous? populous that sounds right i'm gonna pull up a like list that. of molyneux games because now i want to see what they all are there's black and white which and, was mm-hmm. like you'll have a virtual pet who will grow and respond to your actions yeah, and there was also, like, that one had some sort of thing where you would, like, use your mouse to, like, cast spells, and he made it sound, like, all incredible, but then it turned out to just be, like, draw a circle with your mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when Okami did it, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Maybe what is happening here is that Molyneux is sort of a uh, an idea man, mm-hmm. and then other franchises take his ideas and refine them. Yeah, he's like a Billy Mays character, where he's like a hype man. Mm-hmm. It's like, get ready! Only for things that, like, don't exist and will will never exist. You're right. not gonna believe what we can do! Like, if the Milo presentation for Kinect was a, like, this is what Xbox 20 will be like in the year 2098. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, you know, I, I could believe that, but... To say that this is a product that's coming out next year and we'll be able to do that, like, that is unconscionable. I didn't realize he was the lead designer on Dungeon Keeper. That actually was a pretty solid game. That's the one where you play the Dungeon Master and you, like, kill heroes and set traps for them. Oh, that's new. That sounds like something you'd like. (laughs) I always wanted to play that one, uh, Tecmo's Deception, which was for the PS1, where you played this lady making this uh, dungeon to kill heroes. It was like early PS1 game. Sound pretty fun. It sounds like the exact same thing that Matt just described. It does. But imagine you were playing as a sexy lady. Oh. I always play as a sexy lady. That's true. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Peter Molyneux. Hype it's man. really just like a bunch of 90s crap that nobody cares about, like The Syndicate and Populous 1 and 2. Oh, no. Hey, and Syndicate's a good Syndicate game. Is All a good of game. the fables, including that shitty Connect fable... And black and white one and two. And then after that, it is just uh, a bunch of post Lionhead oh. games that are utter garbage, like Remember Curiosity, the- What's and in the Curiosity Cube, and Goddess. Mm-hmm. Like, the, you won't believe the life changing gift that will be when you finish Curiosity. And the one guy finished it and then he got to control Goddess. But then, like, the things that he promised this guy would be able to do never actually happened. And yeah. the guy's like, I just, I just want him to like tell me it's not going to happen. Yeah, last I heard, he he was suing. Yeah. Oh boy, perpetual lawsuit victim. Yes, Peter Molyneux. Victim. <laughs> Target. Controversial figure, Peter Molyneux. Yes, yes, and he made this game Fable. He did, which is a a pr- like as in spite. We should find one of those press conferences where he describes. All, not today, but well, where he describes all of the crazy stuff this game will be able to do. 
we should just make things up in these episodes that happen. Right. Let's not talk about the plot. Let's just talk about cool stuff we wish would happen. <laughs> With the power of the Xbox, you can seduce a farm girl while her father and other sisters are waiting. And then you can sneak around so the father with the shotgun doesn't shoot you. (laughs) You can gather apples for your very own apple pie. It (laughs) bakes in real time. Using the (laughs) physics engine only the Xbox could provide, it dissolves the cooking elements and uh, counts for the chemistry that makes apples into a pie filling. We've cracked custom code that will make your Xbox emanate an apple pie smell. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. Here's a list of things that he said this game was going to include. A female playable character. He said it would be open world. Mm Mm-mm. He and, said that well, it would it have a is. quest system in which tasks could be stolen by other NPCs, which would create dynamic rivalries with them. I don't sort think that of? happens. No. Permanent marks on trees. What? A nope. posse system where townsfolk would gather together and hunt you down. Ooh. Uh, I guess they might. I don't a know about that A revenge system so the sons of people that you had killed would grow up and track you down. Wow. Uh, the ability to marry and have children, and when you died, your children were supposed to be able to carry your quest on for you, and that included mm. real-time aging. Nope. So, wow. Most of that is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to wait 23 years to continue with this game. I always hate in The Sims that you had to like pick a lifespan for the Sims. I don't want to do that. I just want to play them forever. <laughs> All right, we've talked about Peter Molyneux enough. Let's talk about ourselves. That's way better anyway. John, mm-hmm. what's your experience with this game? Have you played it before? Uh, yes. In 2005, I was at a EB Games, and I was like, okay, I think I'm going to buy GTA San Andreas. And then the lady's like, no, you should get... You should get Fable instead. It's so much better. And so I did. I bought Fable. I still have the copy here. And I played it until uh, maybe like another hour from where we are right now. And I hated it. Aww. So I put it away and then bought GTA San Andreas, which I didn't really like that much either. What about oh, you, well. Vanessa? Have you played this before? I played it on the PC when it first came out, but my graphics card could not quite keep up with it, so it looked real janky. Um, I don't remember much about it, but I did play the sequels, and I remember those a little bit more clearly, so I'm familiar with the mechanics and the world. What are you guys playing on? John, John, are you playing original Xbox? No, I'm playing this on uh, the 360, the Anniversary Edition. Okay. What about you, Nessa? As am I. Jim? And I'm on the original Xbox. How's that? It's okay. It's I was watching gameplay videos of uh, the Anniversary Edition, and it looks way better. Yeah. Yeah, I have this on original Xbox, and I plugged it into the 360 and played it for about 10 seconds, and I was like... Immediately, I think I'll just order the anniversary edition. <laughs> it doesn't look good relative to the anniversary. That game looks really good. The anniversary edition does. Uh, it eh. makes the first one look like a real turd. It looks okay. The uh, the anniversary edition has terrifying character models. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, d- it terrifying. does. Terrifying. Yeah, the faces look are haunting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Jim, have you played this game before? I have. I played it when it came out. Um, I beat it. I remember very pointedly playing it uh, up to the the end, and I was like, "Man, when is all this cool shit gonna start happening?" And then the game <laughs> ended, and I was like, "Huh." <laughs> uh, but I really enjoyed the second one. Fable Two is is I haven't played it for a long time, but I remember it being like uh, uh, one of my favorite games. Yeah, it was a lot too. of fun. And I really yeah. I think Fable 3 gets a harder time than it deserves. It does kind of fall apart about halfway through when you become the king, but the gameplay itself is still really good. It's still a fun game. Mhm. Well, as for me, I have played it before. Uh fairly certain I finished it too, though not 100%. We'll see when we get there if I remember it. But uh as well as the other Fable games, and I'm playing the Anniversary Edition, as I said, on the 360. 
So before we dive into the meat of the game, guys, do we want to do our customary uh, level, level up? Are we going to level up? Yeah. Yeah, let's do a quick one. Okay. We'll each, like have a little level up session, a tiny one. Somebody get us started. Vanessa. Ah, I went to see a live recording of a podcast. What? Not this podcast, Ooh. a Not different this one. Podcast. A podcast called The Flop House. Oh, I've heard of that show. It's a uh, yeah. They uh they spent a lot of time shitting on Tampa, and uh, I was sorry that you weren't there to see it, Matt. Well, now I like them even less. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> and the Flop Tampa's House way kind nicer of than us it gets together, credit remember for. Remember that. The no. Flophouse did bring us together. Never heard of this show before. Sounds We fake. signed up for their matchmaking Stuart service. <laughs> <laughs> and you put down your, your likes and your dislikes, and they find you people to uh, have the podcast with. Yeah, and that's I think what it happened matched to us. up me and Jim and John and Vanessa, and then somehow John and Jim got matched up. I don't feel like I mm-hmm. fit in with this group very well, but you know, this is what the flop house told me to do. So yeah, I never got matched are. up with anybody. I just sent I just sent a bunch of dick pics to everybody, and you guys were the only <laughs> ones who responded. <laughs> well, Fanatic. I wanted more information. Like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Why does it look like that? Is it a baby potato? Have you seen the doctor? <laughs> So anyway, you went to the flop house. That's fun. Yeah, that's what I did. And then uh, there was like a little after gathering of local fans and the creators of the flop house. And a good time was had by probably everyone. That's cool. And then I went home. Uh, Jim, how did you level mm-hmm. up? Well, uh, the other day I noticed that uh, a, a used bookstore by my office had been repainted and the sign taken down and a new business had gone in there. So I went in there and it's a it's a pinball bar now. Ooh. Wow. Uh, the walls in this bar are lined with old pinball machines and then there's a full bar in the back that serves uh, beer and all kinds of stuff and food and you can hang out there and play pinball and get drunk. That sounds pretty cool. I freaking cool. love pinball bars. I played uh, a uh, an old Nightmare on Elm Street pinball game, mm-hmm. and I played an old X Files pinball game. Rad. What are the odds that the store is run by a mysterious old man, and at one point you get trapped inside the game? <laughs> Actually, we were the the owner was there, and the people I was with, we were making jokes because the guy who runs it looks just like John Hawks, the actor. Okay, I don't know who that is. Fucking Google it, John. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> Moving on. But yeah, it was fun. Uh, it's a fun bar. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, it's a big yellow building in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. You should go check it out if you're That's in the really area. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you'll see Jim there. Maybe. I live there now. Um. Uh, no, Vanessa already went. John, how did you level up? How did I level up? Um, hmm, have I done anything fun or exciting lately? Uh, oh, I played a game called Fortnite Battle Royale. Oh, really? How did you, you like you, it? Did you stream it and make $100,000? I did. <laughs> I don't even need to talk to you lamos anymore. <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. You're not lamos. Suck it, patrons. Uh, <laughs> I played, uh, yeah, I played it for about ten minutes and and thought I like PUBG better, uh, but I'm glad the kids are having a good time with this game. I uh, I don't remember where I was at recently. I don't. It might have been somewhere in my neighborhood, but I saw someone having a Fortnite themed birthday party where mm-hmm. there were like Fortnite party decorations. It's a real thing now. Yeah, it's the most popular game in the world right now. Crazy. I don't yeah. think I've heard of it. <laughs> Well, it's you, you know your favorite game, PUBG, Vanessa? Pub games, where you play darts and pool and things like that. Yes, and it's like that, but you can also build, like, Minecraft. Okay. So, yeah. like, a Lego pub. Exactly. Uh, I'm exactly. At a picture of it. There's, like, a tomato man. I don't know. I was trying to figure out how I could change the character that I have, but I, I couldn't figure that out. It was very complicated. Uh, <laughs> and that is how I leveled up. Has Matthew leveled up yet? Nobody no. should. Matthew, how did you level up? I leveled down. 
Oh, oh no. no. Do you know how I've leveled down, ladies and gentlemen? I bet I do. I ran my motherfucking car into my goddamn garage like a fucking idiot. And it's going to cost that's me several hundred dollars goes. to fix. So that's yeah. good. That's, boy. that's what you get Yay. for dis- for distracted driving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> John is <laughs> John is intimating that I was drunk. It was at 8.30 in the morning, John. So, of course, I was very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I'll just leave it at that, guys. Let's dive into the quest log. Called the quest log this time. Quest log is an appropriate name for it this time, I think. Quest mm-hmm. log. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. game quest opens log. with uh, a kid having some daydreams. Quest log. You're a creepy child. Will you be a creepy mage, <laughs> or a creepy warrior, or a creepy evil warrior? Yeah, <laughs> it, it opens. Is a creepy child. Yeah, this is. He's a. He's a real good son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, the game opens with this kid having some dreams, and the voiceover is is like, "Oh, he imagined a grand destiny," and uh, you can basically it sets up you can do evil stuff and you can do good stuff and you can fight people, <laughs> and that's pretty much the gist of what's going on in the opening. Yeah, it's just a little boy being like, "Oh, maybe I'll be a Jedi, or maybe I'll be a Sith." Uh. And then, by the way, classic RPG opening. He gets he gets uh, roused from sleep by Ooh. his papa. You're mm-hmm. right. Mm. And papa's like, "Hey, dumb shit, go buy a present for your sister. It's her birthday." <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, you forgot your sister's birthday again, you little piece of shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Which he's like, what eight or something? It's like it would not be beyond the pale to give him a little reminder. No. Yeah. And also, wake up your children. Like, why are you criticizing them for sleeping if you don't wake them up? Also, (laughs) like, I have kids about this age. Trust me. You know when their fucking birthday's coming up. (laughs) Because they talk about it constantly. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But uh, the father is having none of this child, and uh, he will not give him money for his sister's birthday present unless he goes around town and does good deeds. What does that mean, doing good deeds? I don't like, know. Like, is he j- just supposed to go find stuff to do for people? Yeah. I, I mean, that's guess, what you do. That yeah. is true. Oh, so what are the I, good deeds? I've done this. I've left my house and done good deeds. Once I found a dog that had gotten loose and I brought it back. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. I used to shovel snow for people in my hometown, but I I expected and received money. <laughs> that's not a good deed. That's capitalism. That's a transaction. Which is not the same thing. Yeah. Unless you're a libertarian. <laughs> there's a few good deeds around town that you can do, but there's also a bad deed that you can do. Oh, Ooh. no. Wait, what's the bad deed? There's a few bad deeds you can well, do. Well, you can do bad versions of the good deeds. You can mm-hmm. find a dude making out with some broad that's not his wife and then take money from him to keep his secret. Yeah, you Maybe can, you can yeah. go but tell if his you, wife. If, but if you don't take money from him, <laughs> it is a good deed. <laughs> but what is if you do take the money? Yeah, if you do take the money and then you still tell his wife, is it a good bad yes, deed? Yes, <laughs> get a good deed point. It made me really mad. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Man. And the, the, like, there's a kid that's being beat up by another kid, and you can beat up, or the, you can beat up the bully, or you can beat up the whiny little horrible. Hideous troll child. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Ugh, they're so ugly in this game. There's mm-hmm. also something that has to do with barrels. What's the barrel one? Oh, you, you can- have to uh, stand. A guy is like, I really need to use the bathroom, but it's my job to stand in between these barrels. So can you stand in between <laughs> these barrels <laughs> right. for like five minutes? And doesn't like some kid comes up and was like, you can break those barrels if you want. Yeah. And he starts taunting you. He's like, what are you, a goody sissy? <laughs> they do use the word sissy in this game, which is like, come on. It's 2018. Yeah, well, I wanted to punch 
every child in this village pretty yeah. much <laughs> can you imagine so, peter yeah. peter molyneux hyping this game up and he's like all the characters are gonna say sissy and it's gonna be procedurally generated insults <laughs> <laughs> i feel like the game really wants you to be bad it really kind of eggs you on to do bad things but that's kind of life. Now, are, Vanessa, are you going to play as a good guy or a bad guy? Uh, obviously, someone as pure and virtuous as me doesn't even have it in them to play as a bad guy if I wanted to, which I don't. So I will play as a good, true, innocent little Vanessa. For me, the targeting system isn't super great, so I've accidentally done hurt some innocent people Yeah, already. I shot a guy with an arrow, but he survived. <laughs> But then he booed me. It was very rude. <laughs> That's right. That's the renowned system. I guess we'll get into that later. Ooh. But boy, is it dumb. Just to set the scene here, we woke up. We're in a little village, and the little village is... Is this Oakvale? Yes, it is. Yes. Oaktown? Oakvale. Oakvale. Welcome to Oakvale, the podcast about Peter Molyneux's lies. <laughs> <laughs> So you go and you do these dumb good deeds, and then what happens, Jimmy? Uh, you go and speak to your papa, and he gives papa. you some money to go buy your sister some sweets. From the creepiest uh, sweet-selling traveling merchant. Oh, yeah, clearly a pedophile. Mm -hmm. He's got Whoa. a rad mustache, though. Thing goes out past his ears. You know... <laughs> Every time, okay, I don't want to make generalizations here, but every time a guy curl accuse their mustache, my interest in them just plummets. <laughs> Why does that? What? What is it? What does that tell you? What does that seemingly tell you about their character that you don't like? They want you to ask about their interesting mustache, <laughs> <laughs> which probably means they're not very interesting. Yeah, And then they want to poke <laughs> you in the face with their mustache when you're trying to smooch them. Ugh. And it feels awful. It's just like, ugh, no. Ugh. <laughs> you have a mustache. Yeah, I don't have a curlicued one that has to use wax to curly it. Well, you know, just because yeah. yours stands out without the wax. Ladies and gentlemen, John's mustache is so long it wraps around his head twice. Well, yeah. Can I can I tell you about my skepticism of the the beard oil and wax industry? Because hey, I use beard oil. That seems what like a real know. sham. What is beard oil? It just makes your beard like easier to manage. It's cooking For oil. Me, like, they just repackage mine, like, cooking oil. Somebody out. Somebody somebody eats some Taco Bell and then they spit in a bottle and then John buys it and rubs it in his beard. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I just use it so my beard doesn't go everywhere. That's a bit more easy to to like groom. Ah, uh, like brow wax. Yeah, it makes it, it – it's silkier. It feels nice, too. Mm hmm Hmm. 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 At any rate, I don't trust this guy's facial hair. And he's also charging three gold pieces for a box of chocolates. And generally, over the centuries, the standard has been one gold coin is enough to buy you a, a nice suit. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like he's vastly overcharging this child. Well, John, the market it, um, dictates the prices, and uh, you have to consider the scarcity of the chocolate in the world. That's true. Peter Molyneux really hyped up the the dynamic economic system of Fable and <laughs> how it was all fluid. You see, in this game, there is a fantasy South America where cacao is sourced, so you have to wait for fantasy shipments on fantasy boats that will arrive in real time for <laughs> bakers to start cooking this chocolate. <laughs> you can harvest your own cacao and disrupt the chocolate economy of the fable world. <laughs> But the sons of the cacao farmers will come for revenge once they come to age. <laughs> once you destabilize the cacao growing regions, they will join the rebellion and uh, fight off the colonists and you'll no longer get their resources. <laughs> but unfortunately, none of that happened. No. No. You just buy the chocolate and you give yeah. it to your creepy sister who is playing with a scarecrow in a field. Just another mala 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 new. Molyneux. lie. <laughs> Just another Molyneux fable, am I right? <laughs> so I like, okay, so Teresa, the sister, uh, spoiler, is a super important character. 
Yes, and she speaks a little bit about um, how she has dreams. She has a. She, I think she mentioned she has a dream about something bad happening. Well, mm-hmm. she she woke you up with her screaming last night because she had nightmares. That's very awful. And then when you give her the chocolates, she's like, "Oh, chocolates! Just like I knew you would give me. I saw it in my dream, Mama oh, Sia." Yeah. <laughs> All right. Quick side note: uh, these jokey voice acting things that you guys doing are better than the game. <laughs> but the game has real British people uh, and not our terrible fake British accents. Every oh, time shit. a screechy this game has Cockney fake British accent. people doing fake British accents. No, this is real British voice Come actors on, doing real get British accents. A sporty place. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Matthew. You got to go to England sometime. It is wild. <laughs> <Come on, John. laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one really talks like oh no i've been to england <laughs> podcast field yeah, trip everybody like that. podcast field trip <laughs> yep. we're going to england i went to stonehenge and for some reason the stones all lit up when i walked by and glowed an eerie red it was very strange oh. <laughs> yeah. stonehenge magic stone from troll 2 yeah, there was definitely mm-hmm. uh, voices chanting in the air. The chosen one. I think I might be. I, I might be the Antichrist. Anyways, what the fuck are we talking about? Your sister had a nightmare and then dreamed that she you were going to give her chocolate, and then something bad happens. So your sister not only sees the present, but sees the future. Huh? get it? Oh, hey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Her nightmare is that she had to interact with your creepy character model and weird face. <laughs> That's why she woke up screaming. But no, she she has a premonition that like the the village is going to get raided by bandits, which is exactly what happens. Yeah, that's what happens right that second. Right. Here's what and I they- don't get. She tells you to run and like hide in the woods or something. Why uh-huh. doesn't she go run and hide in the woods with you? It's That's very a strange. Maybe she's pretending to be a scarecrow in that field that she's in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the game doesn't hold back in the violence done against these villagers. I was really surprised that these bandits killed everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's and a the, lot of dead bodies in this game. Mm-hmm. The great thing is you have these ridiculous character models like – and the. So the way that people walk and run in this game is, like, inherently hilarious because it looks so fucking stupid. So these bandits are running down the street like, I don't know, galloping apes or something. Mm-hmm. And there's and a lot of... Everyone has these ah, giant hands. Ah, has Everyone's hands are, like, three feet long. I was just going to say that. Like, everybody's got hands the size of the Statue of Liberty's hands. Yeah. <laughs> They are creepy. It is nuts to think that somebody like designed this game and was like, yeah, this looks good. Every single character in this game doesn't <laughs> look like horrid monstrosities. Well, see, there, the, the thing is that there are some characters that I think look fine, like Maze, who gets introduced in a second. He's a good looking character. I had no, other than, other than his weird eyeballs in the anniversary edition, I thought he was, the character design with he him He does was fine. have weird eyeballs in the anniversary edition. I did notice that too. Everyone has weird Can eyeballs. Can you imagine Molyneux at a press conference? And he's like, your decisions will affect the size of your character's hands. <laughs> <laughs> if you plant a tree, this guy will have weird eyes. <laughs> Our game will have the largest hands of any video game ever created. They'll be lovingly sculpted every pore in detail. Oh, God. <laughs> Sounds like Charlie's uncle slash lawyer from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> your Kinect will scan the size Giant of hands. your real hands, double them in size, and make them your character's hands. <laughs> yeah, he's better than George Lucas. I really like having Peter Molyneux here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Peter. We hate your game and we hate your face. <laughs> I wouldn't say I hate this game. But let's let's keep going. So everybody in the village dies, and then you stupidly go walking back into town. Well, you go to mm-hmm. find your your uh, your your pop pop, papa, <laughs> and he tries to he tries to protect the family, and he uh, gets murdered. 
Hecka murdered. Yep. And your yep. Uh, sister and mom get kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Which you find out from like voiceovers in a tapestry. You don't see it happening. Yeah. I did like, like the, the tapestry thing is fine. I did like the way it looked when they like pulled out and you got to see the whole piece, which was it yeah. showed like this kind of arch of people getting murdered, uh, peaked with your father's murder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then little, little vignettes of, uh, your mom and sister getting, uh, kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that happens, and then you run back into town, uh, running past at least seven hundred dead bodies. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, and they say everyone in town is dead, but you can still hear screaming, so that seems to disprove his theory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you also run across a burning bridge, which uh, don't try that in real life. It's not a great idea. Mm-mm. By the way, I think they say it explicitly that the bandits are there for you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're there. They're killing everybody because they're looking for you and your sister. And your sister. Because I some guess they heard about prophecy. those good deeds. <laughs> <laughs> they heard about how I uh, I told that guy, took that guy's money, and then ratted him out to his wife. And they were like, you know what? <laughs> this won't stand. Yeah, they they're uh, coming to kill you because you're a narc. <laughs> <laughs> Snitches get stitches in the throat. So, uh, Whoa. and then what happens? Somebody shows up, is it? Yeah, you're Maze. crying over the body of your dead pop pop, and, uh, you're about to be murdered by an, a bandit, and then he gets shot by lightning and he dies, and Maze shows up and he's like, t- t- if, you know, come with me if you want to live. And he looks like, uh, Chris, not Christoph Waltz, uh, Christoph Lambert from Mortal Kombat. He does. With, like, the blue glowing, uh, Raiden face. Mm-hmm. I watched that, uh, movie Mortal Kombat last Sunday, like a week ago, <laughs> just because I didn't have anything else to do. It holds of up. Of course man. you did. It does not. <laughs> Anyways, he teleports you away to the Heroes Guild. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh boy. And then, like, and- 20 years skips ahead, so that's fun. Yeah, it goes ahead a little bit to, like, when you're a teenager, and then it skips ahead again. And each time it it stops, you get to do some more training, you know, busting beetles and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, first he takes you to your little dorm room, and he's like, you have a dorm mate. Her name is Whisper, uh, but she's playing in the woods, even though it's midnight, I guess. (laughs) And uh, enjoy your new life. And then the little boy just starts sobbing to himself and... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the next day, uh, Whisper wakes him up and takes you outside to wail on a straw dummy. Now, Whisper uh, is a cool character. I quite like her. Me too. Me She's too. Like a, she- I heard it as sort of like islandy, like okay. yeah. Caribbean accent. Yeah, and, and you'll later meet her giant uh, brother Thunder. Yeah, and he what did you think of him, of John? Tree. He he's quite beefy and big mm-hmm. why do these characters the the all have american gladiator names <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh i i do like the doesn't this feel vaguely hogwartsy vanessa going to this new school and you're absolutely and i was all primed to make all these hogwarts jokes and it would be very clever and then i was doing something and my xbox popped up with a little message of you're a wizard hero, and I'm like, the game scooped me. <laughs> <laughs> it scooped my joke. Uh, are you shipping Whisper and your hero now? Absolutely. I think she would be a great choice for him. Mm-hmm. I am planning on murdering her and everybody that lives in this guild. <laughs> wow. Oh, jeez. And planting, <laughs> planting acorns in all their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of John, you had a uh, you had a concept for how you're going to play this game. Do you want to maybe maybe now's the time to mention that? All right. Well, it, it's a secret uh, concept that I'll share with you all. Uh, I got it from one of our our uh, active people in our Facebook group, Eris, uh, where he suggested you try seducing everyone in the game so they all fight each other, which sounds. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, while I'm going to play as a good character doing good things, I'm also going to try and romance every NPC in the game. Is that something you can do? See what happens. Yes, yes, it is. At least I know it is in two and three. I assume that it is in one. So, I don't know. I mean, you can yes, we'll you can out. definitely try to romance people. You've got that. Um, 
that's part of your stupid fucking social wheel. Can you try oh. to romance people as a boy? Uh, no, you can just like dance and you can only and, you uh, can only romance laugh. the guy selling the chocolates. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely tried talking as as like a teen. I tried talking to everybody there, and they they just all like enjoy your dancing and laughing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this social wheel, Matt. I, I don't know if it's just me or what the deal is, but it seems to be just broken. Like, I can't ever get it to do what I want it to do. And so now I just don't want to do anything with it. I got it to work right at the, la- right at the last part of this episode, uh, the- this chunker. Um, I did one thing correct. But basically, you have all these options, and some people will like some of them, and some people won't like other ones. Like, there's farting. Matt, this is a game with farting, your favorite activity. Fable will have <laughs> dynamic farts. <laughs> Depending on what you consume, your fart will have a different <laughs> audio and consistency. Each NPC also has a different tolerance for your farts. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically get like this emote wheel, and as you progress through the game, you get more and more emotions or stuff that you can like do. Except it's like you have to hold down one trigger. Sometimes other ones will pop up, and it's like random it seems random to like figure out when dancing will show up versus laughing yeah because i I tried to like assign to the wheel because they're like you can assign different things and i did that but then they still won't pop up in that order i think you have to like hit talk the a button and then hold down right trigger and they show up or something that's real dumb yeah Yeah, it's it's janky. So you can burp and you can fart and you can like wave hello. <laughs> you can't. I don't think you ever actually speak English. I think you just like make noises at people. It's like grunt at people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I, I did notice. Uh, also, the main character when he's being talked to during cutscenes like glubs his mouth like a fish. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> he is eating the words so he can <laughs> comprehend them. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so you get this stupid social thing. And this ties into the renown system where your deeds produce good or bad renown and people will, like, clap and cheer for you or boo you. I don't I can't, I don't know down. if that is good or bad because it it's kind of delightful when you run into a town and everyone's like, yay, and they clap for you <laughs> and they chase you. But um, it's kind of annoying as well. I just have a lot of people pointing and laughing at me. It's because you're a chicken chaser. Yeah, the town people don't like wannabe heroes. So early in the game, they will point and laugh at you, and they will call you Chicken Chaser, which is your name. It is your, it's your title. You can buy a yes. new one pretty quickly. I already bought. Now I am Saber. Can can Ooh. I can I also mention that each one of these expressions, like like giggle and 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 belch and fart, have little symbols. And the, the symbol for the fart is a butt <laughs> with, a, with an exclamation point in between the butt cheeks. <laughs> and also, it, and, and wind coming out of the butt. Yes. I, I really hope to get that off of my screen because I hate that <laughs> and it's upsetting. <laughs> I hate it. I hate the stupid game's farting. You hate love it. butts. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I don't right, like farts. So, anyway, uh, where are we? You get we beat dumped up by Maze. <laughs> yeah, he, he uh, is like, okay, now deal with the guild master. And, and uh, then the guild master uh, the next day is training you. You get woken up by Whisper. You go out to get some training. You beat up a scarecrow. You have to fight then Whisper. The day after that you grow up a little bit more you fight whisper with a sword yeah and once you fight her once uh the guild master will sort of comment on how you did but then you can do it again for a letter grade which i love i f- i didn't like having to beat up whisper in front of her brother because that's where yeah, he shows up that was super rude yeah and yeah, he's real shitty about it too he's, oh this little mm. shit ain't gonna beat my sister and then you beat his sister and he's like oh whisper fuck you <laughs> i wondered if maybe i should have thrown the fight yeah i kind of feel like that too mm-hmm and uh, the combat, actually, I don't remember it being this good in the original Fable, but I found it pretty fun. Like, I like the dodging mechanic a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
the only problem is there's t- there's a right trigger lock on and a left trigger lock on, which seems to have different effects, and I don't know what the difference is. I know left will let you hurt villagers, but it also seems to, like be Z targeting like Zelda. Yeah, oh. I mean this, the combat in this game is very Zelda inspired, and it works pretty well. There's a spell that I immediately started beefing up that is uh, like a battle rush or something, where you like okay. go flying at them and attack them, which lets you zip around the screen. So that's really great, and use that. Oh, okay. I'll have to get that. Mm. Excellent tip, Matt. Good one, Matt. Th- thanks, guys. Matt's tip corner. <laughs> well, we we just fl- we're happy to have you back on the podcast. Just the yeah. tip with Matthew Van Zant. <laughs> I haven't seen Matt in months. I know. I've been hiding out ever since the Great Grandia debacle. <laughs> <laughs> that almost that almost broke the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you murder this guy's sister in front of him, and he's really mad about it. <laughs> and, and yeah, and she see she's sad because you totally kick her butt. I guess you can let her win, right? I don't know. I don't know either. Why didn't you do that? If you like being nice and good, Vanessa, because yeah. that wouldn't be nice. It would give her an overinflated sense of her skill, and then she would go out to the battlefield all cocky and get herself killed. All right. I guess humiliating her in front of her brother is the right thing to do. <laughs> Look, <laughs> everyone knows that the best way to learn is to be put into a simulated situation and challenged. Mm, okay, okay. Um, yeah, and that, so did you get go back and get the A plus so you could get the better sword? Of course. I got to get those tasty A pluses. Yum, yum, yum. Give me that 4.0. <laughs> Wow, Vanessa's obsessed. Oh, it feels so good. Jim, did you go back and get the A plus? No. What? <gasps> Why not? What's the what? It's not worth it. You got a sword. My time it's a better is more sword. valuable than that. You also <laughs> get a crossbow at the Lynx crossbow training. You get a crossbow. I had to. Yeah, if you do the A plus, I had to really practice on that crossbow training. Oh, the crossbow one is really easy to get an A. Do you want John's tip on how to get an A plus? Sure, we'll see if I did the same thing. Okay, so aim. If you use the manual aiming, mm-hmm. look to a point where all three of them will be, and just kind of like charge it, and then let go every time one of them runs in front of your cursor, and then you will get enough points for an A plus. That's more or less what I did. I uh, I figured out the timing for the back row. Um, I put my cursor sort of in the far right corner. And I did that as well. Did the timing for when, like, you can measure by, like, the furthest guy's little head when it passes a certain point, you know, to release the trigger. And then uh, you get lots of points for fully charged hitting the furthest guy back. Uh, so I just did that. I don't know if it's my old 360 or not, but this game runs at about 20 frames a second. Mm. It's like... It's chuggy. This mm. game is very chuggy. Mm-hmm. It's is not it good. chuggy on yours? No, it's not chuggy. No, mine is not either. But the load times take a long time. Yeah, mine too. Hmm. Maybe I, I like right now my disk drive doesn't work anymore and stuff. Like my Xbox is very almost dead. I should probably get one of those like nicer Xbox 360s mm-hmm. or an Xbox One at that point, really, because that plays the Xbox 360 games, right? <laughs> Some of mm. them. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, the, the cro- I really like the crossbow training. Like they put this Nordic background for some reason. It was pretty fun. Did you notice that, Vanessa? Mm-hmm. There's like yeah, uh, it's a it, good it's, time. They put a back a backdrop of mountains behind you, and they're yeah. like, they're. Uh, I like the animation on the scarecrows too. They like jiggle in a pretty fun way. Mm-hmm. It's cute. You, yeah, uh, it, it is very cute. And uh, there is also magic training. But also, uh, after you do the crossbow training, there's a mage who tells you, hey, can you kill some birds for me? I did not do this. This sounded like a terrible idea. You get good points for doing what? it. Really? I wasn't going to go around killing little birdies. You do. And oh, and they, they, uh, there's also a killing bugs a session that I found pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, going out and killing the beetles. I like that. Mm-hmm. And a gathering apples for a pie session. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I did that. And so the magic... Uh, I Sometimes it seems like if I'm holding down the right cursor, magic like doesn't fire all the way. But if I hold down the left... Tr- or k- trigger. If I hold down the left trigger, it does. What's up with that? 
I don't know, but it had this whole thing of like switching targets and things like that, but I didn't have to do that at all. I just held down the left trigger the whole time and it automatically switched to the correct next target. So it was a very easy test. That also, like the guy that I was taking the test with, I zapped him because I was like holding that down. Oh, no. Yeah, I felt very bad. Did he like that? No. And it said like, you will get... Uh, uh, swarmed by guards if you keep attacking villagers. Mm. And I apologized. Well, I, I didn't really apologize. I Cossack danced. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked it, so it was fine. Uh, yeah, at the, so I got an A plus there, and what? Oh, you just get like a mana potion and a, a resurrection potion for an A plus. Yeah, I was that. hoping for like some clothing, but no. The, the, the lightning spell looks pretty cool, though. Mm-hmm. Do you think you'll concentrate on bows or magic or swords, Vanessa? Bows are kind of where my heart is, but enemies come at you very quickly and uh, get into your space, so you really do have to switch to a sword. Jim? I'm a sword boy. Ooh. Matthew? Uh, all of the above. What about you, John? Normally, like in two and three, I concentrate on guns. I don't know if you get guns in this game. I don't think so. Uh, so I guess in this one, I'm probably going to try and do like swords and magic and bows. So I'll be like Matthew and try to be an all rounder. But the ma- the magic seems pretty fun. I like zapping things. Do you have to like choose? It doesn't make you choose anything. You can just kind of do what you want. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I've already it's just started. Like however you like to play. Yeah, I've already started beefing up my hot bowed and uh, my magic. This force <laughs> lightning is great. I love the fact that it starts you with fucking force lightning. That's great. Your character's appearance does change dependent on uh, what you concentrate on. Mm-hmm. That's mm. true. If I keep eating pies, will I get fat? Because I know that happens. Pretty in two. sure you could. Is it? Oh, is that two? Yeah, maybe that's two. Only two, and not in three. Mm. Wait, in two well, you can get, get fat, fat in three. No, you cannot. That's you get terrible. Fat in two. Yeah, you can get fat in two. Well, I'm sure that John will make himself a big buff boy. Uh-huh. Aha! <laughs> I already started improving my physique, and I just got to get rid of the ho- horrible uh, waterfalls haircut now. <laughs> <laughs> curtains? Every oh, yeah, curtains. That's it. I, I noticed that the ladies had the ver- like the-, the the lady whose husband was cheating on her had the most like 1990s character model with like the curtains haircut and the the ample bosom. Mm-hmm. She looked like something out of uh, Sacrifice by uh, what was the studio that made that shiny studios? She doesn't talk either. If we're going back to that, she just squeaks and like giggles, and it's kind of gross. Oh, she talks, though. She's like, I'm going to go get him. I'll show him the what for. That call. Oh, was it she called Cad or something? Oh, We're yeah. We're talking yeah. about the the lady. The that wife. The, oh, not the wife. I'm talking about the lady. The, you find the oh, guy with the no, lady, no. and she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they've watched a lot of Benny Hill. <laughs> all right so anyway uh where are we? we beat up whisper we did all the dumb little training montages and yeah then we... you, you know you got you guys got your a pluses and your and your crossbows and and all that stuff and then we uh we we become like a p- apprentice what is, what's the title that they give us chicken chaser we're junior like junior heroes or whatever mm-hmm. that's where we get the sigil from from the adventurers guild yeah and this thing and- lets you teleport right does it? Yeah. You can teleport oh. back to the guild or to any town where you've unlocked the Oh, that's cool. Thing. And you can you're also introduced to like the the map. There's a map, right? Mm-hmm. It's a shitty map. Yeah. In the in the castle there is er the guild, there's a a big table with like a detailed map of the area, which is really cool. And uh they go the later games go more into this. Where it's like you can it's sort of interactive, but in this one it just takes you to a map screen. Yeah, yeah. that's where you get your quests. And so yeah. we go on our first quest, right? And this is where we have to go kill some. Did bugs. you before you left? Did you watch Maze uh, talk with this weird zombie man? No. no. If you go to Maze's tower, you can sneak in, and he's talking with this guy named Scythe, who's like sort of undead. 
and they're talking they're they're talking about ominous stuff that they have to do like because there something foretells it and uh it seems like they both know stuff is going on and uh he disappears he teleports out and uh Maze is like you can come in now yeah that guy he's no longer human he's basically done so much that he doesn't even have blood or a heart pumping anymore wow like a real Darth Vader yeah, and and uh, then you try to talk to Maze again. He's like, "Look, don't don't come to me with your request. Talk to the Guildmaster." Mm-hmm. Oh, we did kind of gloss over your final test, which is sort of to battle Maze, but he doesn't try to hit you. You just have to hit him. Yes, that was pretty fun, actually. I like that. You have to do it with uh, first with swords, and then with bows, and then with lightning. And with lightning, I was just like Emperor Palpatining him, like zap. <laughs> yeah, like Maze really makes it clear that he doesn't give a fuck about you. Nope. It's just really weird. Well, he does, He sort of acknowledges that there's something important about you, but he won't go into it a I little bit, I think. I would think that after I got straight A pluses on the training ground and shattered <laughs> all of these records, Maze might be a little impressed. He doesn't care about that, Vanessa. <laughs> N- good grades don't mean anything in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> so the guildmaster sends you off on your first quest, and it's to kill a bunch of bees. Yeah. Yay! And this is the last thing we'll talk about this episode. This, When you get there, it's pretty delightful. The picnic area is being ruined by bees, giant, giant bees that are killing everybody. Yeah. Are they killing these people? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's like dead bodies all around the park. <laughs> oh, my Did you God. That's notice? hilarious. I just thought they were like, <laughs> you know, an anaphylactic shock or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can either save people as the bees are attacking them, or you can just stand there and watch the bees kill them and then kill the bees. <laughs> I did save. I saved two people. Uh, there's a lady who's being like chased around a table. Mm-hmm. And then there's a guy who's just like one on one fighting a bee. And you can totally save. I like that. I, I thought that was actually pretty fun. That it's it's scripted, but it's also interactive. Mm-hmm. It's not like you you don't have to press a button to do it. You just fight the thing that's fighting him. Yep. Yeah. And I, and I accidentally hit the guy that was attacking the bee. No. But he didn't die, so it was fine. Did he boo <laughs> at you? Uh, for a little bit, but then later he was fine. He was very happy. <laughs> And then you get to the first boss, a giant bee. The wasp giant queen. Bee. Giant wasp. And uh, this thing looked pretty cool. I liked fighting this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a big fancy looking wasp and it had like a like a buzzing attack, attack kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That would summon little bees. Yeah, it would summon little bees. Force lightning really does those things in though. Yeah. It does, yeah. <laughs> it kind of give you yeah, a I way just... too powerful starting spell. You could just walk up to this bee and just fry it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. And then and, you uh, kill the wasp queen, and then you you take her head. Yeah. So this and is another so this aspect is, of the game, the trophies. Yeah. I would almost call it a bullshit mini game. It is. It is. <laughs> the trophy. I thought this was pretty fun. Uh, and, and since we're almost there, I, I, uh, are you okay if I just... Transition Slide into, into my your corner. corner. <laughs> so you can take the head of this bee queen and walk up to villagers, and it'll be like, there are three people in this area that will see y- y- the maximum of three that can see your, your trophy if you hold it at the right time. So you have to like try and mount your trophy and show it to everybody, getting the maximum possible uh, people watching it, which is a lot like, do you remember the Captain Bosch pronouncements? Uh, my name is Captain Bosch oh, yeah. <laughs> from Twelve. It's the exact same mechanic yep. as that, and I thought I, I got all three. But what uh, is it? First do? Area, so that it it gives you more renown, so you can take more quests. I think. Mm-hmm. Now, is it good or bad renown, or is renown just its own thing? I'm I think confused. it's its own thing. Yeah, renown is is generally n- it's like neutral. Yeah, it's so separate if I have a from ton alignment. Of renown, but I'm evil. Will people still cheer for me? Won't you get booed and hissed? Yeah, mm-hmm. they'll boo and run away from you in fear. See, that's that's the shitty thing about being bad in this game. Like, it kind of ruins the game. You want to be bad and still have people love you and cheer for you? Yeah, have you heard of Donald Trump? No. <laughs> See, Matthew was just telling it like it is. 
and he he's a no bullshit kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's just I saying just what like everybody's thinking. <laughs> you know, I could have a beer with Matthew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not afraid of the PC police. All right, guys, are we, uh, are we done? Are we done? <laughs> Were there any other mini game? I guess the only other mini game is killing the sparrows around the school, which is pretty fun. Uh, uh, so so far, two out of two mini games get a thumbs up from John. Hey, all right. Uh, yes, I think we are done. Time for some squarely against. Squarely against. It's time for us to see if we're roundly for or against you and me. No. No. Nope. Sorry. I mean, I'm not against either of us. I don't know about as a combination. I think we do a pretty good job when it's just just like just you and I on a level up episode. So yeah. I'm, yeah, everyone loves that. I'm not squarely against that. I mean, it wasn't just you guys. Nah, pretty sure it was just us. <laughs> <laughs> just us league. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so squarely against, who wants to go f- first? I want to go first. You go first. I am squarely against the failed promise that I could not play as a female character in this game. Uh, I like it very much when the game gives me the option. I am tired all the time of playing as a stupid, broody white man. And, uh, let me be a lady. Fable 2 and 3 did. It was great. So, boo on you, uh, David McCormick, or whatever we decided that guy's name was. Peter for- Molyneux. <laughs> That's David the one. McCormick? <laughs> for <laughs> failing to deliver on your promise. Uh, Matt, what are you squarely against? Um, uh, I'll try to start positive because the likelihood that I get tired of this game and hate it by the end is high. So, uh, so far I like the, uh, I like the combat and the, uh, you know, the gameplay. It plays pretty well. It's, it's all right. It's fun. I'm looking to get into some, I'm looking into getting into some meat in this game. So far it's been little baby starting quests. Yeah. What about you, John? I am roundly for the music so far. Ooh. Uh. It's it's very good. I think Danny Elfman does the theme. I think he composed the theme, but I could be wrong. What? What a catch. Uh, uh, let me look this up. Well, I'll look it up later. <laughs> but I think I seem to remember Danny Elfman does the music, and we'll have to find a good cover music for this, because there's some good tunes. I think, it, And I think the game looks pretty. Like Other than the creepy, creepy character models, I think the environments are really nice. Some good lighting. Da-da-da. Jim? Um, I am, I'll just, I'll be somewhat general that I'm roundly for the, the game so far. Like, uh, even though some of the elements are a little silly, the games, I give the game a lot of points because it seems to be, uh, willing to have fun with itself. And there's a kind of an inherent goofiness in a lot of the characters that I really enjoy. So I'm having fun playing it. And we'll see how Operation Smoochums progresses as I can seduce all the villagers one by one. <laughs> Can you be gay in this game? You can, actually. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Let's be gay. All right. <laughs> what just <laughs> happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, I think that that uh, my character for Operation Smoochums will have to be pansexual. If you want to smooch everyone, that's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. It's fine. All right, everyone. Well, that is it for this episode of Square Roots. For next episode, we will be playing To the Darkwood. Ooh, sounds spooky. Ooh. All right, everyone. So before we go, um, let's give our quick reminders. Uh, if you want to reach out and interact with us hosts and other listeners of the podcast, you can do so in our Facebook group, which is the Square Roots Podcast Group for Smart, Cool, Very Attractive People. 
Uh, you can send us an email. We are Square Roots Podcast at gmail.com, or you can tweet at us. We are at Square Roots Pod. And theme to be, to be D, TBD. Our intro and outro music for this series is The One Nils' cover of the Oakvale theme. Check out The One Nils on Patreon and YouTube. Links in the show notes. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes wherever you listen to podcasts. If you screenshot your review and post in the Facebook group or Twitter, I'll tell you how you leveled up. As uh, Matt's punishment for missing... The Grandia episodes. <laughs> uh, Matt's punishment was Grandia. <laughs> everyone has demanded that Matt be punished in some way. Uh, so we have opted to make him read the Patreon donor list all by himself. So a big shout out and a thank you to our patrons. Devin Sloan, James Plett, Greg Bailey, Race Jenkins, Joseph Rogers, Rob Schubert, Stu Skeel, Xavier Krieger, David Shook, Matthew Jorgensen, Vanessa's mom, Aaron Bachman, Robert M. Pullum, Evan Dixon, Stan, Tracy Tanoff, Josh, Robert T., Ross Hartley, Tyler Petty, Brody Toy, Justin Ham, Bree Garth, Meredith Anderson, Brian Pitt, Ward Childress, Patrick Coover, Wonderswan, Miguel Torres, Resty Kamada. Boy, I fucked that one up for sure. Sorry. Andrew Way, Wayant. Come on, guys. Get easier names. Tom. <laughs> Lynn Central. <laughs> Justin Benoit. Cameron Shaw. Shall we? Shall we? <laughs> and Shall we? Cyril the Wolf. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. And if you would like your name included in future shout outs, as well as access to our bonus content, like our level up podcast or our square roots versus episodes and the instant classic revival, um, you can become a patron, uh, at patreon.com slash square roots podcast. All right, everybody. Well, that's it for this week's episode of square roots. I am Jim Banks. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I am John. Brandon. And I'm Vanessa. Bye. Bye. Bye.
the the pieces of Stonehenge end up in those masks in Halloween three that made they kids sure heads did. into, did they really? into was, like bugs? That was one line that was dropped in that movie that nobody <laughs> wanted to touch. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is delightful. I love that and movie. Every mask will contain pieces of Stonehenge that will turn your children's heads into bugs. But it's weird because <laughs> they put the Stonehenge, they made like Stonehenge microchips that yep. shot lasers at people's face and turned their heads into bugs and snakes. Did doesn't it really sound like whoever designed this was the horror film equivalent of Peter Molyneux? <laughs> like really blue skying <laughs> yeah. these plans for how they're going to kill off all the children in America. Yeah, and there's one one of the things I when we're we're derailing here, but one of the things I really <laughs> like about that movie is that it doesn't take the whole uh concept of time zones into effect. <laughs> Because the whole plan is contingent on a commercial airing uh, at midnight on Halloween, and but it it's midnight at different times in different places, yep. and so by the time it happens in one place, everybody's going to know that these masks turn your heads into snakes and bugs. It's true. Assuming I'm on the West Coast, the minute I hear reports of children's heads turning into masks and bugs... Uh, even if I don't know anything about the masks, I stay inside and we go quietly sit in our rooms. We don't. Yeah, you know what? Halloween's canceled because people's heads are turning into rattles, rattlesnakes. <laughs> I was always in bed by midnight on Halloween. I mean, that's a school night, oftentimes. Once, if there was a commercial that told you to stay up and watch the special broadcast while I you wore your mask. Don't think that my mom would let me. Oh. <laughs> by the way, another great line in that. Another fantastic line in that movie is when the main character is starting to freak out, and he says, "I think it's time to call the Marines." <laughs> Come on. What about uh, what about a modern version of that? How would that work with DVRs? Would it be kids waking up the next morning being like, "Oh yeah, I forgot to watch it. I'm going to watch it now." <laughs> First <laughs> thing into bugs. They would make the commercial into a YouTube bumper. Right. That's how and it would reach all the kids. And they forgot that they enabled the skip ad feature, so they're like, no, everyone's skipping the ad. Yeah, and everyone, everyone that has YouTube Premium is safe because they don't get to see ads. <laughs> all right. Anyways, what the fuck are we talking about? 